What's good everybody, it's Batman. So today we're gonna to be doing the final part of Weeaboo's tier list. It has been a hot minute, we are almost done. But I'll tell you what, tier lists take a, a while, right? But we're gonna, we're gonna get back into it and let's see what else he has to say. Small islands. And should be in the high three digit to four digit mock range in speed. My guy in base form was stated to be much faster than part one Kakashi. He's at least at the peak of the high Jonin tier, but could be argued into the bottom of low Kage tier. With the 6th gate, he can strike so fast he can create fireballs, and was able to stomp a 30% chakra Kasame clone, fight on par against the full power Kasame, and fight alongside Kakashi against the Edo Jinchuriki and their tailed beast version 2 chakra cloaks, so he should be somewhere in the Mikage tier. In the 7th gate, he was able to one-shot Kasame, creating a wind blast larger than Turtle Island, knock back Madara's Susano, and fight back against 6 Paz Madara with Warak Gara calling his moves inhuman, so he should definitely be in this tier. However, the strain this form puts on his body and his lack of versatility puts him at the bottom. Six-tailed Naruto gave Pain a run for his money, even overpowering his almighty push. He could probably beat 7th Gate Guy since he can survive his own beast bomb and can just outlast him. Guru Guru with Yamato inside him can use a miniature version of Hashirama's Thousand Hand Buddha statue, as well as all five chakra elements, which he used to hold off a large amount of the Shinobi Alliance, including four of the five Kage and Mifune. Hiruzen, Orochimaru, and Team Taka gave him trouble, but they still couldn't defeat him, and he lasted until Kage's defeat. His wood style should be able to suppress and overpower Six-tailed Naruto. The third Raikage was strong enough to stalemate the Eight Tails, and nothing could penetrate his lightning armor but his own finger spear, including a Rasen Shuriken from a Kerma Cloak Naruto clone. Yep. He was able to fight 10,000 Shinobi for three days and nights before going down, so his durability and stamina should give him the win over Seventh Gate Guy, and being equal to the full Eight Tails would likely put him above Six Tailed Naruto. It is narratively implied Sakura with her 100 healings jutsu during the war surpassed Tsunade, and was on the same level as Naruto with his Grade 1 Kerma Cloak and Sasuke with his Eternal Manga Kyo Sharingan, so she should be in the same tier as them. In the last, he stayed to be resistant to Genjutsu by Shikamaru, who's also good at countering Genjutsu himself. I believe she can beat the third Raikage because she can heal after being stabbed by him, and can punch hard enough to damage Kaguya, so she just cracks his skull right through his lightning armor after getting pierced. The well, not if she loses her fucking head, <laughs> you know, and he would be faster, so I don't know about that one, but, but I get what he's saying. The second Mizukage Gengetsu was so strong, he was accidentally defeating the Shinobi Alliance while trying to tell them how to beat him. He summons a clan that casts Genjutsu on the battlefield, and his steam of Jutsu is too fast for Gara's sand and can continuously create powerful explosions. He only ended up losing due to gold being present on the battlefield. In the past, he and the second Tsuchikage Mu ended up killing each other, so they should be around the same level. But Mu is implied to be stronger by the Shinobi Alliance, and Particle Style is just one of the deadliest Jutsu there is, instantly disassembling anything hit by it on an atomic level. I put Inoki between Gengetsu and Mu because he's basically the same as Mu, except Mu's also a sensor ninja, can split his body into two, and can turn invisible. Inoki can change the weight of objects, making them lighter or heavier, and can use his power to fly. He can even use it to carry Turtle Island and stop Madara's meteor with the help of Gara. In the fight with Madara, he performed the best by far in comparison to the other Kage, and Madara flat out said he was the problem. Considering he has reaction speeds on par with the 4th Raikage, since he can react to the 4th Raikage's increased speed from his Light and Boulder Jutsu, he should be able to one-shot anyone from the tier below with his Atomic Dismantling Jutsu. He would have done it to Manga Kyo Sasuke if Obito hadn't saved him. Daedara said he was faster than he was in his prime, so you could argue here's in statement of being the strongest Kage in his time would no longer apply to old Inoki. Mu was the only reanimated Kage to dodge Gara's sand. He stated he could easily solo the Shinobi forces at the desert, and that Inoki was the only one who could stop him but that even he would need Gara's help. I believe these feats and statements solidify his and Anoki's placements here. Sage Jiraiya was able to take down three pain bodies, with Pa stating nobody but him could have gotten that far, and Pain even admitted Jiraiya would have won if he knew his secrets ahead of time. He comes with the Sage Toad's Ma and Pa, who are extremely powerful in their own right, and can perform the Genjutsu Frog Song, which paralyzes their enemies and leads to easy kills. Sage Mode should give him the sensing abilities and reaction speed needed to avoid being killed by the characters below him in time to get Frog Song off and win. Sage Mode Naruto is stated to have surpassed Jiraiya, and can use the Rasen Shuriken without consequence in this form. He defeated multiple Paths of Pain, the third Raikage, and could even give 50% Kurama some trouble, overpowering him with the help of his mother. It may have been implied that Sage Mode has greater reaction speed than his Kurama Cloak Mode, but his Kurama Cloak Mode should have greater movement speed since he could barely control it at first. He also said he was much more powerful than when he fought Pain while using it. Plus it doesn't have a time limit and has a far greater chakra pool, being able to send out multiple clones across the battlefields, each one easily having at least mid-Kage level power. Minato was the fastest shinobi of his time, and was so deadly he was- We're gonna take a look at this list so far, so... Alright. Okay. 
So, we have Guy, Seventh Gate. Well, you know what? Let me wait until I see the, the tier list fully. Hang on. Let, let me let him finish. Given a flea on sight order by the other nations. His body flicker technique was faster than Toby Rama's, who was the fastest ninja of his time, which would include Madara and Hashirama. If his raw speed okay. was enough, he could also teleport with the flying Raijin technique, which allowed him to get the upper hand on the fourth Raikage and defeat teenage Obito, who was implied to be above pain and that only Naruto with Kuruma under his control could defeat him. This should already place Minato above everyone except maybe Kuruma Cloak Naruto, who is implied to be of a similar speed to Minato, has the Rasen Shuriken which was stronger than any of Minato's Jutsu, and has more Chakra. However, I think Minato's flying Raijin, skill, and experience will give him the edge over his son. He also has stage mode if he needs it. I just said Toby Rama had inferior body flicker than Minato, and it was also stated Minato surpassed him in the flying Raiji. But I put Toby Rama higher, as I think he's actually superior in other areas that are more relevant. He was able to plant multiple paper bombs on Berserk Six Paths Obito, and teleport away an attack from controlled Six Paths Obito before Chroma Cloak Minato could. He's the one who created the Edo Tensei Jutsu, and has a continuously exploding paper bomb jutsu that can be comboed with it. Him flexing his chakra intimidated everyone in the room besides Hashirama, including Minato, Hiruzen, Orochimaru, and Sasuke with the eternal manga Kyosharangan. Minato even called Toby Rama and Hashirama's flex off incredible. Toby Rama is also a sensory ninja with better sensing capabilities than Hashirama, so unless you think having better sensory abilities and speed than Hashirama makes Toby Rama above him, you can't just say Minato's above Toby Rama for having better body flicker or teleportation. Toby Rama's greater reaction speed and attack arsenal gives him the win in my opinion. Sage mode is one thing that might push Minato above Toby Rama, but even Minato himself said he wasn't very good at it. It takes him a long time to build up the chakra necessary to enter the form. He can't maintain it long, and he barely has any real combat experience with it. So Toby Rama should remain above him in my humble opinion. Oh. Killer B even in just his base form surpassed the fourth Raikage, but since he would have lost the Kasame without eight tails, he would go right in between them. In his cloaked forms, he would be somewhere above Kisame, but below the third Raikage, since he's even with a full powered Eight Tails. In his full Eight Tails form, as a Jinchuriki, he's even stronger than the Eight Tails alone, and should have more power than anyone below him. He also has the reaction speed to deal with Minato, so I think he should go right above him and Toby Rama. Sasuke with his eternal Manga Kyo Sharingan can use all of his Manga Kyo abilities without any repercussions. You could argue Toby Rama's above him since he seemingly intimidated Sasuke, but I think Sasuke grew throughout the war, and seemingly even unlocked the perfect Susanoo in his fight with Obito. Even if he can't use the perfect Susanoo without combining with Naruto, he still managed to push back and stab blind Sage Mode Madara, who was able to blitz Sage Mode Naruto before even gaining Sage Mode himself. So that should put Sasuke quite a bit above Sage Mode Naruto. His Susanoo gives him one of the best defenses there is, and he can now spam a Madarasu, so he's practically untouchable and can kill almost anyone. Plus he has powerful Genjutsu. With his Sage Susanoo and the amp he got from Kurama, he would be in the tier above, and if he truly can use the perfect Susanoo on his own, he would likely be there as well. Summoning the God of Shinobi tier, these characters have the power to destroy large islands to small countries, and can fight at 4-digit Mach with sub-relativistic speeds. Either that or they have incredible abilities that allow them to fight on this level. The bottom two characters- Okay, so now before he moves on to the next ones, this is interesting. So... <clears throat> We will start with uh, Sasuke, obviously. So EMS Sasuke over uh, Killer B. It's interesting. So Killer B with full eight tails, obviously, is the strongest form, right? He does a tail beast bomb. It basically boils down to the question: Do you think that can go through his Susan? And if he also has perfect Susan, and with him having a model rod, so you name it. The whole nine yards, Sasuke would definitely be Killer B. So that's fine. Now, Toby Rama in Minato? Hell fucking no. What the fuck? The man gets fucking blitzed to oblivion, okay? He would get fucking slammed, alright? Um, so that's just not the case at all. Um, it's just, he's just not fast like that, you name it. And that's just basically what you're working with. He would definitely get blitzed. Um, and that's just kind of what you have, you know what I mean? Or even if, like, for some reason you think he can activate Susano fast enough before he gets blitz, you know, and just know what's happening, which I don't think would be the case. You just get blitz and killed, okay? Basically, like, you know, he uses Susano. They can still teleport his Susano and shit. Minato could seal Sasuke as well, which that would be a problem. Um, he has the ability to seal, like, the full nine tails, you name it, etc., right? And tail beasts. Um, so that could also be a GG, right? 
Um, or if Minato basically is, you know, I don't know, just like dodging around, whatever, and, and kind of just dealing with Sasuke, or maybe teleports him, like, I don't fucking know, like, to space or something. Like, overall, Minato's a smart dude. You know what I mean? He could probably be able to figure something out, you know you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. Um, worst case scenario, he could probably even go into Sage mode, and maybe then he could be able to get through Susano, but... If Sasuke has perfect Susano, he's just, Minato just, just remotely doesn't have anything to prove. Like, he would, would have to use ceiling hacks, you know what I mean? So maybe a ceiling hacks could could deal with him, but I don't even think it gets to the Susano point. I think he just gets dealt with by Minato. Um, I do personally believe that. Minato's just that fast. Todorama too. Um, this is what you're kind of working with. Now, well, like, if Todorama's able to basically utilize his flying Raijin and, and get an opening like that, then yeah, he definitely would probably kill him. Um, but see, Toporama is an interesting character because he loses to Ken and Gen twice. That's the problem. He's a really, really weird character. First time he lost to Ken and Gen, and it stayed in the data books and everything, and stated as well in the manga, to where literally um, he fights against Ken and Gen with the aid of the second Raikage and was put in the Virgin Life and Death. And I mean, now I do know before everyone starts screaming, "Oh, well, that was a surprise attack!" Whatever, blah, blah blah. Do you know how many fucking Naruto characters can react to surprise attacks? And you're also talking about the most paranoid fucking Hokage in existence, and who has the most god tier sensory abilities. And you're telling me he can't sense Kinkaku and Ginkaku? You know what I mean? Or be aware. And let's say for some weird reason his sensory abilities was like off, which is completely out of character, mind you, because he's in a political meeting, and we saw how the Five Kinkaku Summit meeting is very tense. Everyone's stressed, whatever you name it, and ready to fight and go blow for blow. So, like, for one, you just have to give a lot of the benefit of the doubt to Toby Rama. But even if that's the case, once again, we see plenty of people reacting to surprise attacks. There's no way you're going to convince me a full-powered Toby Rama gets fucking hit off guard by Kid again. That's crazy. You know what I mean? So, like, when you put all that into consideration and he loses to those two, he should have to be way lower, okay? And if anything. And we know he doesn't scale to Jubido or Six Pass level. That's absolutely insane. It's completely contradicted by the narrative emphasis that he has and him losing to Ken again. Okay, and it's a state of verbatim that Minato's faster than several times, etc. Better than him, even a place of market. Like, he's completely surpassed him. And that goes along with the whole narrative notion of, of, the eight, of generation surpassing the next. You know what I mean? So you have that too. But regardless, that's basically what you have. And the, all the po points he mentioned, which was him scaling the Jubido or scaling the Madara, that's not true. Because you literally see the Satan Tobirama hiding from Madara and Hashirama, okay, because he knows they're more powerful than him. You know what I mean? You name it. He doesn't scale to Madara. He doesn't scale to Jubido. He doesn't speed blitz Minotaur or anything like that, whatever. Um, and mind you, the time where he was showing, like, the whole, where he, um, you know, teleports the bomb away from Casey and Minotaur before he's about to grab it. You, for one, you could see Minotaur literally reacting and going to teleport it away. He even says he will do it. And two, what's it called? That was the Shadow Clone that Tobarama used. So you have that too. Three, okay, Minato is mentally nerfed in days at the point, which is also stated in the data books. And we know how mental nerfs and mental amps can impact your power. So you have that as well. So no matter what, like, it's just... Tobarama's not over Minato. It's that simple. You know, if you want to say he's at least over base Minato, sure, whatever, have at it. But KCM, hell no. This is completely dishonest and crazy. So overall, that's basically what you're working with. Um, but, you know, just putting that out there. KCM, Naruto... That would be a really good fight. Um, it is not only stated that Naruto needs the power of the Nine Tails to fight against Sasuke when he has only MS, you know, with the Susano and everything. But, you know, he has infinite Susano, infinite Amaterasu, you name it. They're fighting whatever. It would be a really good fight. And it's kind of implied that they're in a similar ballpark. Um, and until Naruto goes KCM2, then Sasuke's like, what the fuck, how far have you come or whatever. And then when he goes KCM2 in Sage Mode, Sasuke gets even more pissed off that he's more stronger than him. So you have all that, right? So, no matter what, like, you know, it's a really good fight. Um, maybe Naruto can be able to pull it off. If Sasuke has perfect Susano, I just don't see Naruto winning that. I really don't. Um, and that's just kind of what you're working with. Uh, if he doesn't have perfect Susano, which it'll more likely escalate that to that anyways. But let's say he doesn't. Then maybe Naruto could somehow pull it off or whatever. Um, and that's just kind of what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? Um, that's basically it. You know, or Naruto just straight up speed blitzes him before he can do anything and kills him. Just like with Minato, you name it. I mean, that's just kind of what you're working with, and that's basically it, right? Um, but it's a good fight. Sasuke more likely probably will take it, though. You know, he has Genjutsu. 
He has the perfect Susano, Matarazzi, the whole nine yards. Sage Naruto, we know it's clearly stated that he needs a nine to shock to even fuck with that Sasuke. It's not going to be enough. He would lose. That's correct. Uh, Sage Mojiraya, um, what's it called? Can Sage Mojiraya deal with V2 Six Tails Naruto? I don't know about that one. I really don't. Um, probably not. I don't think there's enough for him to be on that level. But that's just me. Um, definitely loses to the majority of all those other people. Um, Moo probably wins against Inoki. Probably wins. Yep. The other dude. Sakura. Yep. Base Sakura. Third right Kage. So I think third right Kage would actually just be faster than Jiraiya. And would just blitz him. And then basically just cut his head off and he's dead. But that's just me. Um, Giriguru. Uh, more than likely... Um, what's it called, would uh, beat that Jirai as well. Um, unless he's able to do like Frog Song or something, then he could deal with him. That's it, you know. Um, here is him would beat Jirai, by the way. I just want to put that out there too. And MS Sasuke against Sage Mo Jirai. So, I don't think MS Sasuke is beating Sage Mo, uh, or Sage Mo Jirai is beating MS Sasuke. He has like a Madaratsu, Susana, you name it. And overall, Jirai just has nothing to be able to deal with that. Um, but he's able to like, you know, like, I just feel like he just gets destroyed. I really do. I'm sorry. Um, and this is basically that. But we have that and... Uh, let me see. All those other Okage above Sasuke, I think that's just crazy. I don't think they either beat him either. That's just me personally, but we'll just keep it at that. Uh, I'm talking about MS and EMS. Uh, third right Kage could definitely go through uh, Sasuke Susano with his lightning spear and you name it and just kind of fuck him up. So yeah, he'd be fucked from that. Six Tails V2 Naruto would lose to Sasuke with MS because of Madaratsu and you name it. I do believe that. And uh, Seventh Gate Guy... I don't think Seventh Gate Guy is beating um, the Sonic. Like, more Art Guy, probably, maybe, yep. Yeah. But, like, before, no. But either way, that's whatever. Um, Kasami, at least. Full power Kasami, that's contentious, but probably beats him. Um, fourth Right Kage, that's a really good battle, to be honest. But probably, maybe. Actually, no. Just, mm. Guy doesn't have any durability that feats. That's the problem. And I don't I don't know if Guy would be faster than him at that point. I really don't. That's a, that's an interesting one. But we'll, we'll just leave that at that. Uh, Sanade definitely gets fucked up by him. Uh, Gara, Unless you don't think he can tank everything, then he loses. Yep, beats everyone else. It's fine. That's fine, yep. Uh, V2 Four Tails probably can't be beaten up by that. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't think maybe Hidora can do it, but um, yeah, that's what you got for the most part. Everything else is fine. Um, the sorry might be actually be with a B guy, by the way, but I'll, I'll just leave that out. Yeah, that's kind of what you're working with. Um, Oh, he has Sage Monaruto above uh, Five Koke Summit Sasuke. So, it's stated that he needs a nine to his chakra. So, that he would just lose. Um, in the anime, they do fight each other, technically. Um, in Sage Mon, why not? But the moment he goes to Sano, he just can't win in Sage Mon anymore. So, we even see the fight, technically. I don't think... Sage Monaruto wouldn't be able to beat the fourth Raikage... He has a time limit and two. Yeah, he can be able to react and everything more likely, you know, because it's stated he has defeats for it, right? But he won't be able to damage the right Kage. That's the problem, you know? He just won't be able to do it. Um, that's kind of what you have. I do think the fourth Rikage would beat Sage Renard. Like, maybe Sage Renard can pull off the Lens Rise and Shuriken, but that's that's this depends, right? But I'm just looking at everything else. Um, Sage Monarto could lose to Kakashi by Kamui, by the way. That's a possibility. A killer B. 
could also potentially lose Emis Sasuke as well. Um, Kamui's is broken. It's really fucking strong. So, but overall, like I think for the most part, that's where we could fully just say what we have. Um, it's really nothing more, much more, you know. I think everything else for the most part is fine. So I don't really, yeah, that's all I can really say. That's it. And then day, once it gets all the way up to this point, guys, like this is all extremely, I'm just going to put this out there too. This is all extremely contentious. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can view things from so many angles, uh, argue from so many perspectives, et cetera, the whole nine yards, whatever. So it is what it is. Nobody's perfect when it comes to scaling art. Nobody. I'm a single fucking person. Um, but just due to like the objective evidence that I remember and the empirical evidence, you name it, um, and all that kind of stuff, you name it. That's why I'm kind of saying what I'm saying. Obviously, I'm t I make my video videos on it that I can go more in depth and show the evidence for it, you know, things like that. And until I'm, I make my own tier list one day, you guys will know where I fully stand on everything, no matter what. So, but anyways, let's uh, let's keep going. These are from the Sasuke Book of Sunrise novel that was adapted into Shippuden episodes 484 through 488. It honestly feels weird putting these characters this high, but they kind of have to be in this tier since they were able to somewhat challenge a post-war arc Sasuke with a Renegon. Fujin was able to create a tornado that could even push back Sasuke's perfect Susanoo. Mentos gum comes in a durable paperboard gum bottle that- The legal lowly Chino as the Ketsuro Yugan, which has Sharingan level Genjutsu, which allowed her to easily defeat Fushin, and even forced Sasuke to use his manga cure to get out of it. Her eyes also let her manipulate blood, and she can use this power to create blood dragons or turn people into living bombs just by touching them. She was under Sasuke's Genjutsu for the entire final fight, so you could argue she should be placed much lower in raw power, but she can basically just Genjutsu most of the rest of the verse. Considering in the novel Sasuke told the Raikage only he could counter her Genjutsu. The novel fight was also different, and Sasuke admitted he needed the Susanoo to combat the blood dragons, so that would also back her being placed here. The majority of the characters above her have more powerful eyes or a tailed beast to break them from Genjutsu, and I refuse to believe these two characters should be higher than any of the characters above. Atachi was a prodigy that surpassed most of the other Uchiha when he was but a child, and killed most of them when he was 13. When he joined the Akatsuki, he easily defeated Orochimaru with Genjutsu, which is what he's known best for. His most powerful Genjutsu is Tsukiyome, which he used to make Akashi suffer through three days of torture in a single moment. It may have seemed he lost to heavy Sasuke, but he actually planned out everything that happened in that battle and purposefully lost, and that's while he was extremely weakened. He has the Yadamir, which can reflect all attacks, and the Totsuka Blade, which can seal any opponent it touches in an infinite Genjutsu prison. With this combination, he's said to be invincible. He used these abilities along with his Susanoo to defeat Orochimaru. When he came back as an Edo, he was able to keep up with Kurama, Cloak, Naruto, and B, and was the MVP in defeating Nagato. Itachi can sacrifice one of his eyes to use the Izanami technique, which places his opponent in a repeating Genjutsu loop until they realize who they really are. <laughs> However, it's not the easiest jutsu to cast. <laughs> that was perfect, Weeaboo. That was really good. <laughs> oh, shit. Nagato has the Renegon, which gives him the abilities to absorb all chakra, rip out souls, read minds, summon powerful beasts, become part robot, and repel or pull all things. Even as a child, he could accidentally kill Chunin level ninja. As pain, Nagato would be in the tier below somewhere above six-tailed Naruto since he sealed him in his Chubaku Tensei, which ripped up an entire mountain range, and forced Naruto to grow more tails. Pain easily defeated Hanzo, and it was stated Guy would only get in Naruto's way when fighting him, so he should be above those two as well. He would probably be below Kurma Cloak Naruto, as Sage Mode Naruto could have arguably defeated Pain if he didn't have a time limit, and Naruto with his Kurma Cloak during the war was confirmed to be much stronger than he was when he fought Pain. Pain himself admitted he probably couldn't have defeated Jiraiya if he knew his secret, so you could argue him right under Sage Mode Jiraiya as well. So, Pain, or Nagato, does scale to um, actually over Casey went on to A and B. He shit on them both effortlessly, basically no diff. So, I'm just kind of putting that out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, he does have the scaling. And Nagato, all he's doing with the passive Pains is enforcing his chakra into their bodies. So, meaning his power goes to them as well. And he can kind of just split it apart from each one. Or you could focus it and channel it to mainly one or whatever, etc. Or just amplify them whenever he wants. He does it with their jutsus, does it with the, you know, with feats, you name it, etc. So, like, overall, that's just not the case. Um, 
I do think full power Tendo Pain would shit on Casey and Naruto. He would be able to react, utilize his running on abilities, you name it, and kind of pull a Natachi scenario. You know what I mean? He would just scale to it. And he could just be able to deal with anything he throws at him, basically. And Naruto would just lose, you know? Um, especially if all the passive pains are there, too. Yeah, he's, he's not doing that. And even... Uh, what's it called? And that's just, once again, like with Nagato's feats. Um, and then when, when Pain was fighting throughout the whole Konoha stuff and whatnot, like everyone forgets that he's fatigued, that he's nerfed, and there's like so much fucking context and variables of why everything was even happening. He doesn't just scale to six tails V2 Naruto. That's not true at all. He literally no diff the six tails can Judiki in the anime, like effortlessly. You know, while with the nine tails, like, he's having a hard time. And for one, he's ex extremely fatigued as well, and by himself. But he's still actually fighting the six tails, going blow for blow, basically. Landing blows on him as well. Tanking blows from the six tails, Naruto. Not dying instantly. Then outrunning and being faster than the six tails V2 Naruto. So, like, and that's while he's fatigued and nerfed, remind you. And sold the entire village. And stated by the smartest man on the face of the planet, by Shikamaru's dad... That Naruto and Pain are just in a whole other fucking caliber. Nobody can help. It just won't do anything. You know what I mean? So, like, no matter what, like, I don't know what to tell you. Pain is no fucking joke. He's really fucking powerful. Um, where it becomes interesting, obviously, it's the whole, you know, when it comes to characters like Itachi, Obito, you know, the whole nine yards. But I do think, um, you know, when it comes to, like, certain individuals, it's interesting. But for the most part, I do think he would be uh, Naruto. Uh, Minato is a little different because he can throw his kunines everywhere. It's unpredictable where he'll teleport. He can spam teleportation, you name it. It's not like he has to use body flicker. He could just use flying Raijin instead. Alternates between space and time itself where things kind of moving in slow motion. Um, Rising Gon, Sage, you name it. Like Minato could maybe be, be probably able to pull it off, but that's also a good fight and contentious. I don't care who you think he'll take it. Um, but you can make arguments for either side. And overall, that's what you're working with. You know what I mean? Uh, like, it is what it is. Um, but, so... Just want to kind of put that out. But Pain's no joke. And that whole statement right there as well. Basically all that was is Nagato being humble and just giving respect for his sensei. And two, we clearly know Jiraiya doesn't scale to Pain. Because for one, the feats just completely contradict that. You know what I mean? Like, he, Jiraiya says verbatim, which is against three passive Pain, said if he keeps fighting in Sage Mode, he will be killed. So no, Jiraiya does not scale to Pain. Or all the Pains all at once, you name it. Like, that's not the case at all. He couldn't do anything. So... And even Sage One Naruto gets, gets immediately no diff by Tendo Pain alone while fatigued and nerf as well. So, just say, like, Pain's is way above Sage One Naruto and Sage One Jiraiya. Uh, I'm just, that's, from what I see and feats, you name it, this is what I'm working with, my conclusion. And most importantly, what that also can be interpreted towards with that statement is the fact that Nagato thought, like, maybe if Jiraiya knew that Nagato just had to be dealt with instead of the passive pains. And he knew where he was. Maybe somehow, some way, he could kill him. But this, once again, it's just him being respectful, being humble. Minato has done it with when he says, "Oh, I suck at saving it." He has fucking perfect sage mode. Okay, Atachi with all his misleading statements. You name it. Like the list goes on and on. So, Nagajo in person was confirmed to be stronger than Pain, who was already strong enough to flatten the entire Leaf Village with his almighty push. And as an Edo, he was able to defeat Chroma Cloak Naruto and B at the same time. And it took those two plus Itachi firing their strongest moves to counter his planetary devastation. Enough for two, price for one. Fuck this. Mm. Math makes me hungry. Got my face, bitch. Kabuto took in the abilities of Orochimaru, Suigetsu, Karin, Kimimaro, and the Sound 4, as well as mastered Sage Mode, which allowed him to fight against Itachi and Eternal Mangako Sasuke at the same time. His white extreme attack is basically a super flash bomb jutsu that makes it so nobody but him can properly move or fight. He would have defeated Sasuke right there if Itachi hadn't saved him. And Itachi also had to save Sasuke from Kabuto's inorganic animation. So Kabuto should definitely be above Sasuke at that point. He also blatantly overpowered Sasuke in a jutsu clash, though he did have the type advantage. He landed multiple blows that would have been fatal for Itachi if he wasn't an Edo, and Itachi needed Sasuke's help to break out of his genjutsu. So even though he got put under Izanami, it likely would have never come to that if it was just a 1v1 against the living Itachi. Kabuto has a bunch of summons including Manda 2, who is even bigger and stronger than the original, and could choke out Turtle Island, as well as his army of Edo Tensei. So Sage Run Kabuto is definitely not above Itachi. Um, what's it called? Itachi was holding back and says do not kill Kabuto. And because he's an Edo, it doesn't matter if he gets hit. 
And there was, there's basically a lot of context in that fight. If you go back, you can analyze all the context. Tachi is over Kabuto. He could have dealt with him if he wanted to and killed him instantaneously. He couldn't kill him because he had a reverse Edo Tensei. And he's even telling Sasuke that. And he's backpacking the entire fight. So, Kabuto is definitely not over Itachi. I don't know where he's kind of getting that from. Um, but, let's put that out there. If you want to go like the direction it is, well, it's not the end of the world, but I'm just saying. And then Nagato um, would, would definitely shit on Kabuto as well. Just, you know, soul grab, whatever, blah, blah. You named the whole nine yards. So, just kind of do you do something that could just basically be able to deal with him. Um, and then... Uh, as for that, you know, that's basically it. But I just I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Like, don't get me wrong. Kabuto's really fucking strong. But, like, I, I do think, like, with Nagato or Pain, like, it's definitely interesting and contentious to where, like, you know, maybe it can go either way or whatever because Kabuto just has so much hacks along with Pain having his hacks. But it's the fucking Renegon, bro. You know what I mean? Like, and if you analyze all the data book statements, you name it, et cetera, the whole nine yards, I, I feel like it just it still favors Nagato and he can just deal with Kabuto and that's it. But that's just me. Um, with him saying Nagato over Itachi, he's spitting on that, though. Facts. Some of which are in the tier below. And Nagato is, of course, in this tier. So with all of his summons, Kabuto is easily in this spot. Naruto, after befriending Kurama, became even stronger than before. Having so much tracker, he could amplify the power of the entire Shinobi Alliance by over three times, and protect them from the Ten Tails Cataclysm. He was powerful enough to match the power of five of the other tailed beasts at the same time. And eternal manga kill Sharingan Sasuke was clearly jealous of his power, so he should be a tier above him. Hashirama also said he almost had as much chakra as himself, and he also managed to block a direct beast bomb from the Ten Tails, so him being in the same tier as them makes sense. He could also add on Sage Mode to this form, making him one of the only characters who even has a chance against Six Pass Obito. His father befriended the other half of Kurma he sealed inside himself when he came back as an Edo, so he should be just as strong as Naruto, and he also has the power to activate Sage Mode if he wants. His Sage Mode isn't as good as Naruto's, and he never used it with his Kurma cloak, so you could argue Naruto should be higher. But I think Minato's teleportation ability, battle intelligence, and skill still give him the edge over his son. Back. The two halves of Kurama on their own would be below them, but they would still probably be around the bottom of this tier. Kurama at full power with both of his halves should have more raw power than either Kurama mode Naruto or Minato, but he wouldn't have their abilities and they could arguably surpass him with the Sage mode boost. So he should either be right under or right over them, but definitely below Madara and Obito, who can control him with the Sharingan. Obito when he was a kid was probably around tuning tier, especially after unlocking a Sharingan. After Rin's death, he unlocked his Manga Kyo Sharingan, which allowed him to pass through anything, which quite literally made him untouchable. With this new power and the help of Guru Guru, he was able to slaughter an entire group of elite Jonin and Anbu. Obito also gained the power to suck anything or anyone he touches into an alternate dimension. He was only a teenager when he controlled the Nine Tails and fought Minato, and even though he lost, he still gave Minato a run for his money. Minato considered him a greater threat than Pain, so even at that point he should already be at least high Kage tier. During his reign as the secret leader of the Akatsuki, he was able to toy with the entirety of Team 7 and 8, defeat Fu and Turune, was physically strong enough to stop Suigetsu's sword swing with his bare arm, and was fast enough to save Sasuke from Inoki's particle style mid-activation. Just in case someone does get the better of him, he can use Izanagi to erase that event from reality. He also has Hashirama cells which increase his vitality and allow him to use wood style. After acquiring the Renegon, he undoubtedly falls into the God of Shinobi tier, as it was made pretty clear he was above Naruto even in his full Biju mode, so he should go above him. Obito could summon the Ghetto Statue to restrain the Tailed Beasts, his Uchiha Flame Formation was strong enough to stop full 8 Tails B, and he could chop off the 8 Tails Tentacles and restrain him. So it's clear even in raw power he's above the Tailed Beasts. His Genjutsu shouldn't be underestimated either, as he was able to take over the Nine Tails as a teenager, which is a feat that was considered only possible by Madara, and in the war he was able to repeatedly put Kakashi under Genjutsu, until Kakashi whined for him to stop doing it. He can shake off Ino's Mind Transfer Jutsu in a mere 2 seconds, and even while enhanced by Kurama she can hold him for long. And we all know being put above Ino automatically puts you at God of Shinobi tier. Madara even as a child was able to defeat adult Senju clan members, and after becoming the leader of his clan and unlocking the eternal manga kill Sharingan, he gained access to the perfect Susano, which has the power to cut mountains in half with just the shockwave of its swings. He can control the Nine Tails with his Sharingan, and combine his Susano with it to become even more deadly. After his final fight with Hashirama, he unlocked the Renegon, which gave him access to all of its abilities. And when he came back as an Edo, he was infused with Hashirama's power, which allowed him to use wood style. With these abilities, he was able to defeat the five current Kage at the same time during the fourth ninja war. And he has the ability Izanagi if he needs it. Hashirama has been slightly superior to Madara ever since they were kids, has multiple statements that put him above Madara, and has won just about every fight we've seen between them. All of their fights have been extremely close, one lasting an entire day, but even with the Ninetales help, 
Madara couldn't win once Hashirama brought out his stage mode in Thousand Hand Buddha. Even though their fight was virtually a stalemate in the Fourth Ninja War, Hashirama was using clones to help the Alliance, while Madara was completely focused on him. And Hashirama was still slightly more mobile than Madara, so he should still have the very slight edge over Renegon Madara. His healing jutsu is superior to even Tsunade's, and Madara called him the ultimate shinobi. He's confirmed to have more chakra than full-tailed beast mode Naruto, and he can restrain the Tentails with his deity gates. The Tentails has the power of all the other tailed beasts combined, and is stated on multiple occasions to have the power to instantly wipe out a country, and the sheer size and destructive power of its beast bombs back this up. Its large girth doesn't slow it down either. The What's up, Game Wiso? Fuck you. <clears throat> the second form of the Tentails was stated to be stronger than the first, so it goes one spot higher. Hashirama was able to restrain the second form of the Tentails, but the Tentails could still create clones, so it wasn't fully restrained. And Hashirama basically admitted he needed Naruto and Sasuke to help take it down. After absorbing the Tentails, Obito gained its power and became even deadlier due to his ability to properly focus its power, allowing him to tear down the barrier that could block Tentailed Beast Bombs and casually smash through the deity gates that could restrain it. However, he didn't really have full control, as when he first took in the Tentails, his mind was being corrupted from all the power. Yeah. This spot only represents that. that version of Obito. Even though he was crazy, he still had the ability to use truth seeking orbs, which can turn things to dust similar to particle style, and can be used both offensively and defensively. Hashirama admitted Obito in this form was stronger than him, and Tobirama confirmed even if Hashirama reabsorbed all of his clones, he would still be no match. Yep. So even if Hashirama is above the Tentails, he isn't above Berserk Obito. Madara after being yep. resurrected became even stronger, and then absorbed Hashirama's stage mode on top of that. So since they were close before, this should have allowed him to surpass Hashirama. Even while blind, he could fight against all the tailed beasts at once, and while he lost an arm, that was partly due to Naruto's surprise attacking him, and partly due to him fighting less careful than normal due to having Hashirama's healing powers. After getting one of his Renegon back, he gained the ability to use Limbo, which creates an invisible clone of himself that nobody without the Renegon can see, and nobody without Sage Jutsu can harm. He used this ability to smack all the tailed beasts, and then he overpowered all of them at once with the Ghetto Statue. I put him above Berserk Six Paths Obito because Madara was confident in his ability to defeat even a Control Six Paths Obito after acquiring Sage Mode. And while Obito may be stronger, Madara should be far smarter. And the power gap really shouldn't be that big since Madara was able to break out of the Deity Gates even before gaining Sage Mode. Alright. Oh, not this. So okay. So, before we get into the next tier, okay, we're gonna now dissect this one. So. Okay, a live Madara grid in the Jupiter. Yeah, that's just no, that's insane. Once again, the reason why that doesn't work, even if Madara could think he could somehow be able to do something to Jupiter, whatever, that could be coordinated with a plan, a strategy, something that has to go into consideration in order for him to somehow pull something off on Jupiter. And that's if that is even the case remotely. And what we blatantly see with him just being over Edo Madara and Edo Hashirama, you name it. The whole nine yards and him clearly being the only one on six past level territory while nobody else could fight. He was literally the strongest of his time. You know what I mean? There's just no way a live Madara is, is dealing with him with Renegon. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Like, that's just not the case at all. He would get speed blitz and he would get fucked up. Um, there's just, unfortunately, there's way more evidence for Jubito in favor. And there's just nothing to prove that Madara could actually beat him. You can believe and think all something you want. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Um... <clears throat> That's kind of what you have with Jubito. But yeah, a live Madara does not beat Jubito. It's just crazy. Um, and then uh, Jubito, on the other hand, yep, stronger than everything he did basically just put out there. Absolutely. Um, Jubito would shut on all these people. Uh, a live Madara uh, to be able to fight against the Ten Tails? I don't know about that one, Chief. Um, what's it called? Maybe it could be possible with his perfect Susano or whatever, or you him using Limbo or something. I, I don't know, but that's that's it's really stretching it, you know. Um, the, you would have to basically prove that he has somehow durability enough durability with Susano to tank those levels of attacks, and he just has nothing to support that. Um, then you have Edo Hashirama. That's perfectly fine. Um, he's alive now, and with Renegon. Um, obviously, it was, it was Edo's self. That's fine as well to Renegon to alive. Uh, Obito, yes, absolutely. Uh, Minato, yes, absolutely. Naruto, yep, everything else is perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, that's good for the most part. Then we have the Ten Tails, yep, that's fine as well. Um, then you have Ashrama, yep, that's good. Then you have Edo, Madara, yep, that's fine, yep, perfect. So all that's really good. Um, 
Then he have uh, that's interesting. He has Renegon Obido over KCM2 Minato. The reason why I don't think that's the case is because Minato literally speed blitzed him several times. You know what I mean? He speed blitzed him with the Zetsu thing. He uh, speed blitzed him. What's it called? You know, like a, a, there was another moment too, but overall, like he gets speed blitz, and the mark is still on Obido, so that's a big fucking problem. You know, and I just don't think Obido would be able to react and deal with that level of speed, um, especially while he's already marked. You know what I mean? That's just my um, may, maybe some maybe somehow Obido can pull it off. I don't know because he has the running on abilities. You name it, unless you really think. But then again, the running on is technically more of a nerf to him. If anything, it just grants some hacks and shit, and to summon the ghetto and you know in the whole nine yards. Um, because even with one Renegon, he literally states verbatim he almost lost his mind and it was just too much chalker for him to contain or whatever, blah, blah. So it was mainly hindering him instead of really benefiting him, you know? Um, so overall, I, I do think uh, Minato would probably beat him uh, in KCM2 and everything. I just, unfortunately, this is what you're working with. Um, KCM2 Naruto, we technically see that interaction and Naruto just couldn't do anything. So that's fine um, because of Kamui. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, Kabuto, with him having access to all of uh, the Akatsuki people and him himself as well, I do think it would be too much for Obito. Um, and that's just me personally. Um, you know, and eventually he could somehow create an opening and then deal with him. Maybe Obito could somehow pull it off and, and get a W, but it, it's it's a good fight. But I do think uh, Kabuto would actually take it on Obito. Um, just due to all the hacks he has, um, and, you know, and all the people that he has as well. Like, it'd just be too much for Obito. Like, Obito's strong, but he was literally fighting against Guy, Kakashi, KCM Naruto, then KCM2 Naruto, and Killer B all at once, and he just wasn't able to immediately subdue any of them. And even when Naruto gets, like, his power up to KCM2, like, he still, like, can't do anything. Like, he could at least react with Kami, you name it, whatever, right? That's cool. But he still couldn't do anything to anybody, you know what I mean? So, like, overall, like, you know, it's just kind of what you're working with. Like, you could always argue, like, technically, Obito is weakened and fatigued at that point because of using the Renegon and all the Tail Beasts and everything, blah, blah, the whole nine yards. Then again, he does have Hashirama cells, you know, where he can heal and kind of regenerate a lot quicker, you name it, in comparison to everyone else. Um, but who knows? You know what I mean? It's just, it's a really interesting factor. Uh, he's a really interesting character. Um, but that's just kind of what you have working with. Um, as for Nagato, I do think Obito would... would um, what's it called? So, like, this is... It's interesting. It's either Obito just, like, just deals with him, right? And just calmways him. Or Nagato can be able to react and basically, like, somehow get the W. Whether if it's with, you know, Shino Tensei. Whether if you think that can work on Kamui. Because you can't formulate arguments for it to work. Um, or for it to not work. Um, and then basically, you know... Other than that, like, you know, it's going to be a pretty interesting fight. It's going to be basically whoever can outlast two. I do think Nagato has way more stamina and chakra reserves than Obito in comparison. Um, and he's able to handle fucking both Renegon too, you name it. So he just has way more larger chakra capacity. But, you know, really good chakra control as well. So, like, I, I don't know. It's a really interesting fight. Um, you know, Obito could probably take it. Maybe at Nagato. But I think that's also a good fight as well. Um, and then as for Itachi, like, Itachi's a beast. You know what I mean? Like, he's... I'm glad he actually put him above uh, Orange Mask, Obito, and the Yellow Mask. There's plenty of narrative implications, etc. And if Obito can be dealt with by Donzo's henchmen, Conan, etc., Tachi could definitely do it. So that's really good that he did that. Um, but as for, like, Itachi against Sage Makabuto, I do think he can be able to pull off the W, especially if he's bloodlusted. But if you want to say Kabuto, Sage, Sage Makabuto still takes it, it's fine. It is what it is. Um, as for KCM2 Naruto, I do think Itachi could also be able to contend against, um, what's it called? Like, if, uh, Itachi uses, like, his Susano and whatnot, um, you could probably, like, deal with it to a degree, but eventually he'll just get overpowered and dealt with. Um, but, like, it's, like, Itachi wouldn't beat KCM2 Naruto, but I do think he could at least have some form of relativity. If, if Obito can, I do think he could do something to a degree, but he'd definitely lose way quicker because he just doesn't have Kamui to not survive his all his attacks so, and everything else is basically fine but yeah oh overall his god of shinobi shit is pretty good like, it's actually not bad at all um high kagwe is pretty good whatever um mid, like, you know like i said mo all this for the most part like there's certain bits and pieces of it where it's like i don't know you know it's kind of sus but for the most part it's pretty freaking good like i'm gonna be honest like I, I would say like you know this is like you know 
Like, if it got worse and worse, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, this motherfucker got, like, a C-plus or C-minus then. But, like, so far, he's still at a B-minus for me. You know what I mean? It's not an A. I don't think it's perfect. Um, but then again, let's be real. What tier list is perfect to anyone, right? You know? Um, but overall, like, this is what you're working with. And there is a lot of contentious value the more you get through. There's a lot of contentious value in part one, and there's a lot of contentious value when it gets towards the whole put inside of things, you name it. So it's really, really interesting stuff. But let's finish the last row, and we're about to be done with this once and for all. Coming in the final tier, the Six Paths tier. These characters are at the peak of their verse, with the power to shave away continents or even create and destroy small celestial bodies. They have incredible speed, approaching and possibly even surpassing light itself. Guy after releasing the 8th gate achieved arguably the greatest taijutsu in the verse, literally running circles around Six Paths Madara by jumping off the air. And even the shockwaves of the strikes could damage Madara. It would take only 4-5 to five hits from just his shockwaves for things to get bad for Madara. And a direct strike smashed Madara right through his truth-seeking barrier, which was strong enough to withstand ten-tailed beast bombs. His strongest move is Night Guy, which he became so fast he warped space itself. And landing the move almost killed Six Paths Madara. He's at the bottom of this tier because using the 8th gate kills him, so the best he can hope for is a stalemate. And he would have lost to the weakest version of Six Paths Madara if he wasn't assisted by Minato, Kakashi, Gara, and Lee. Six Paths Obito, after gaining full control, became even stronger than before, and his truth seeking balls became even more deadly, being able to permanently damage Edo Tensei and possibly even the soul itself. It took Biju Sage Mode Naruto, Eternal Manga Kyo Sasuke, Full Eight Tailed Killer B, Kuruma Cloaked Minato, and what was left of the Shinobi Alliance to finally overpower Obito and take his Biju out. Which is something they could only even do in the first place due to Naruto having okay, some. Okay, so he has a perfect control Jubito and mindless. Okay, that's understandable for him to now have. Okay, I see what he was doing in a nutshell. Um, okay, that's perfectly reasonable. I can I can definitely vibe with that. That's not a problem. Um, yeah, that's good. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I do think 8th Gate Guy does beat up Jubito, though. I don't know about that one, because if 8th, 8th, if 8th Gate Guy can beat up Madara, Jubi Madara, who is stated to be stronger than Jubito, verbatim, uh, uh, come on. You know what I mean? Like, and he has to feed Sinem and etc. the whole nine yards. So I do think he would beat Jubito as well. Um, that's just me personally. Biju's chakra inside of him beforehand. They might not have even been able to pull it out if it wasn't for Takno Jutsu. Even if Madara thought he could defeat him, <laughs> it's the fucking heart. Yo, Weeboo's a funny ass guy, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I could, I could understand where it could be like maybe like you know a corny or like you know a little sus here and there, but he's funny, bro. <laughs> Motherfucker be, he be having his moments, you know. Shit, like uh, dead ass. No matter what, what, regardless of what he thinks of this reaction, like he, he's a good guy. <laughs> I like him as a content creator. He's pretty cool. Obito, he doesn't have the feats to back it up. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Zertex fast. Add time, baby. Yeah. Maybe you could pull the tailed beast out of him with the ghetto statue, but even a weakened Obito who had the tailed beasts ripped out of him was able to pierce Six Paths Madara yeah. and rip out a portion of the one and eight tails from him. He also took some sage power that allowed him to react to and block Madara's truth seeking orbs. So I find it hard to believe the Obito who took the entire Shinobi Alliance and almost won would lose to any version of Madara before becoming the ten tails. Uh, well, it wasn't because of the sage power, but basically he was able to react because he could just react. A lot of characters could react to, to Madara's tree sick and orbs. Lee could react, Obito could react, Kakashi could react, Minato could react, a lot of people. <laughs> Belgian jerky. Toneri with the Tensei Gon had the power to move the entire moon, as well as cut yep. it in half. Man, no, no he joke. also had tree seeking orbs and the power to fight against the post-war Naruto. He did end up losing, but Obito should also be below that version of Naruto. And Toneri has yep. more impressive feet, so I put him higher. It's stated he has the power of Hamura, so I would assume Hamura in his prime would be somewhere around this spot as well. Sasuke, after obtaining half of the Sage of Six Paths powers in the form of the Renegon, gained the ability of teleportation and the perfect Susano, if he didn't already have that. With his perfect Susano, he has the power to chop up massive meteors, with even their fragments dwarfing mountain ranges. <clears throat> Six Paths Madara called him fast, and Sasuke was able to cut him in half, when even Six Paths Naruto's lava style Rasen Shuriken couldn't. He's almost on par with Naruto, so I believe he should be above Toneri, who was clearly below Naruto. The only argument to this is that Naruto was stronger when he fought Toneri. But I don't think there's much proof of this besides the fact that he had the other half of Kurma. But 50% of Kurma's power shouldn't be too significant for characters at this level. So I don't think there's enough for me to put Toneri above Sasuke. Kakashi with Obito's chakra giving him six paths powers in the dual Magikyo Sharingan gained the ability to become intangible as well as the perfect Susano, which was stated to be more awesome than Sasuke's. He also did better against Kaguya than Sasuke, so I think that justifies his higher placement. 
When you think about it, he's almost unbeatable if he can use both Kamui powers at the same time, as he would be able to become completely intangible while simultaneously Kamui sniping his enemies. The characters above him are the only ones who I think can handle this combo. Naruto, after gaining the power of the Six Paths, became strong enough to tangle with One-Eyed Six Paths Modern Base and gained resistance to truth-seeking orbs. His lava-style Ross and Shuriken severely damaged Madara and cut the God Tree in half. With his Kurma Cloak, he was able to fight on power Six Paths Madara, with his Shadow Clones handling even Two-Eyed Madara's Limbo Clones. He can make an insane amount of these clones, which he used to hold off Kaguya for a while. These clones should be able to overwhelm Kakashi in his limited Chakra Pool. He was able to match Kaguya's Vacuum Punches, overwhelm her with his Boiling Point Punch, Blitz and cut her arm off, and cause her to go unstable with his super-tailed beast Ross and Shuriken. Sasuke, on the other hand, couldn't tag her with his perfect Susano, got it blown away by her vacuum punches on multiple occasions, and needed Naruto to break him out of Kaguya's grasp. Another reason I put Naruto higher is that even with the power of all the tailed beasts amping him, Sasuke still only managed to stalemate Naruto. Madara, after absorbing all the tailed beasts and becoming the ten-tailed Jinjuriki, was confirmed to be even stronger than six Path Zobito. He would have killed Eight Gates Guy multiple times over if he didn't have outside help, and base six paths Naruto jumped him while he was recovering, so I'm not sure if he should be above him at that point or not. Okay, so <clears throat> what he just said right there, and then uh, that's actually not the case that he was recovering, because Madara literally denies that. He says he's like, is it because uh, like my body's? He's like, no, it's just because he just got stronger. So it's not because he's recovering or whatever. Um, he still had his like full power name and etc. Um, it's this state of verbatim. So this way, people are not are not able to say, oh, well, he was still recovering, whatever. That's why, yada yada. So, um, but anyways, after absorbing the God Tree, he gained even more. Um, so, but I want to say this, Tenori, um, So I'm assuming he's putting them at like their max prime, and if that's the case, then, uh, what's it called? Then they should actually be above Kakashi, Sasuke, and Naruto. But like. If you're putting them like they're in the war arc uh, versions, then Tenori would be strong because he is fighting a stronger Naruto. I don't know why. I, he said something with like why that's not the case. I don't remember, but that's not true. Like it's a stronger Naruto. So um, it's just what you have. But regardless of that, um, then you have like Naruto over Kakashi. That's not true at all. Kakashi was faster than both of them. He was able to literally speed blitz Sasuke and Naruto. Save Sakura before they could do it. Like, Naruto asked Sasuke to use his teleportation, Jutsu Rinnegan teleportation, and he was able to speed blitz that as well, the activization speed of that. I mean, which is crazy, because it's an ocular speed activation, basically, you know, and he could speed blitz that as well. So, like, this Kakashi is no fucking joke. Like, he's just crazy fast. Um, and he would speed blitz Naruto before he could even do Shadow Clones or Sasuke, obviously. And he also speed blitzes Kage twice. Just saying. Naruto does speed blitz Kage at a certain moment too, but technically he was mentally amped at that moment. And he wasn't able to replicate that fee at any other point in time before or after. So Kakashi is over both of them. If we're talking about war arc versions, obviously if you start to get into Boruto territory, they're way beyond that. Um, and then the one that fought Teneri is also beyond these versions too. Like, it's just, I, I don't know. You know, it's kind of weird. Um, and not only that, around that point in time, like Sakura out of all characters was stated to be 8th gate guy level when basically like if an, like it's stated verbatim that she was stated to be eighth gate level after the war okay um with training and everything like the post war basically right so like if she's over here getting that strong naruto would obviously get more stronger along with sasuke and other characters you know it's the same shit right and once again like you literally go to see him from doing all that crazy shit fighting the moon you name it blah blah and comparing that to war arc it's just way better in comparison and it's clearly showing that he's stronger you know um and that's just all you have. But other than that, um, Jubi Madara, I'm assuming that full power or whatever, he says it would be like stronger than uh, in a 1v1 sense, I guess. Sure. Um, that's fine. Um, Kakashi would be over him, though. I don't agree with that. To beat Naruto and Sasuke in a 1v1, that's fine. But Kakashi? I don't know about that. Once again, all the evidence, him speed blitzing Kaguya, who is like, has like an insane amount of more power. Like he literally was able to speed blitz normal uh, Kage's attack, her amplification form uh, as attacks as well. Okay, like where she gets like way, way more fucking stronger. Like way more. Like he's just way over these people. And Kage was stated to be more stronger and powerful than Madara several times. So. Oh, controller down. Cool. All right, we're about to reach the end of this video. I think we have like a minute left or something. So let's get it. Or power and stated himself to have become completely immortal. 
In this state, it was implied it would take Naruto and Sasuke together to defeat him. He then became even stronger after he gained his other Renegon, and basically left Naruto and Sasuke to deal with his Limbo clones and the meteors he just ripped out of the surrounding countries, as they put the entire world under the infinite Tsukiyome. Another impressive feat is how he sent the God Tree's roots across the entire planet in an extremely quick amount of time, capturing the entire world's population. Hagoromo split his power between Naruto and Sasuke, and it was stated Madara was approaching his power. So Hagoromo should be above all three of them. However, that was before Madara got his other Renegon, and after absorbing the power of all the tailed beasts, Kuruma states Sasuke's chakra manipulation was on the level of the Sage of Six Paths. So you could argue that version of Sasuke, Ashura mode Naruto, and double Renegon Six Paths Madara are all around Hagoromo's level. Hagoromo and his brother Hamura were able to defeat Kaguya, and they didn't have anyone like Akashi, Obuto, or Sakura helping them. So you could argue that should put their combined power above Naruto and Sasuke. Hagoromo became even stronger after the fight with Kaguya when he became the Ten-Tailed Jinchuriki, and had the abilities of both Naruto and Sasuke. So I don't see either one of them defeating him in his prime. Plus this dude won't even fully die, and became a ghost that can still interact with the living world somehow. His sons Indra and Ashura in their prime should also probably be in this tier, likely around where Naruto and Sasuke are. Kaguya is the most powerful in the family, with it taking Hagoromo and Hamura working together to take her down. Yeah. Hagoromo did become stronger after absorbing the Tentails, but he should still be weaker than Kaguya, as he implied she was stronger than him on two occasions. She was directly stated to have far greater chakra than Madara, and she took on six paths Naruto and Sasuke at the same time. She did have a little trouble with them, but after absorbing more power from the infinite Tsukiyome, her power and speed became exponentially greater, and she was able to create an expanding true seeking orb that would eventually swallow up the yeah, world. I don't understand that. He shows all that and everything, but yet he completely dismisses the feats Kakashi does against his Kaguya. What? <laughs> Come Due on. to this, this version of her could possibly be in a tier above, as even three characters in this tier working together weren't enough to defeat her, and they needed the added help from Sakura to finally seal her. Sealing is also pretty much the only way to put her down, since she's immortal, and the only seal strong enough to work on her is one that traps her inside of an entire moon. We have finally come to the end of the list. I've probably put more time into this list than any person has ever put into a tier list before, <laughs> and the only person who will probably ever surpass this is my future self, Damn. though I'm not even sure if I can be considered a person anymore. I dare say I've left the realm of humanity and can only be called a weeaboo from now on. Okay, okay. Well, there you go, have it. You know, I'm going to give him a like because it was actually a pretty good video. I really enjoyed it, the editing, and, and it wasn't just like a traditional, like, oh, here's just a tier list and, and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, it was pretty fucking good. Out of all tier list videos I've seen, by far the best in quality and entertainment. And then when it comes to the tier list itself, I will say this bare minimum, since this video is already as long as it is if I combine all three parts, or if I do split it into three parts, then it won't be, but either way, like, it was really good. It was pretty good. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm going to say, uh, I, I'll say a B minus still. B minus. B minus bare minimum. You know what I mean? I was about to say C plus because of what he was deciding to do with the whole six path thing, but it's not like completely the end of the world and there's only certain, you know, here and there is that are like whatever to me but I thought it was pretty good man I thought it was pretty good uh, definitely a B minus I already know there's probably going to be a whole bunch of people that are going to probably lose their minds over this tier list um, if people thought other tier lists that I've you know seen or reacted to or they've whatever and they see this they're going to be definitely a little bit confused from this one <laughs> but uh, but it, it was pretty good man it's pretty good you know I, I do think it was pretty good and uh, for the most part, that's basically what you're working with. Um, yeah, that's all we have. So if you guys enjoyed this vi uh, video series, um, three-part uh, series, or if it is all together, I'll, I'll see. Um, then you guys let me know. As always, um, any of the recommendations you have or reactions, you guys are always more than welcome to. This was basically a reaction request, and that's why I did this. And if you guys enjoyed the video and the reaction, make sure to leave a like. Check out Weeaboo as well. I'll make sure to, uh, Weeaboo Warrior, I'll make sure to put us his YouTube in the description down below. This way you guys can check out. He has tons and tons of content. Crazy amount of subscribers as well. So, um, you know, check him out if you vibe and love the content you name or never even knew about him until now. Now you do. Go give him all the love and support. Help him out, you know. Um, but overall, that's basically it. You know what I mean? I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and as for you as well, Weeaboo Warrior, W video. Really enjoyed it. It was great. Um, don't take it the, the wrong way or offensive either because there are some people that get pretty butthurt when it comes to fictional Naruto or anime um, but it, it was great I mean regardless if I had any disagreements here and there whatever the whole nine yards it, it was pretty good um, and not, not only that brother if you ever wanted to like debate too about something 
I'm all ears too. I've debated a lot of people, to be honest. Um, so uh, even high tier, uh, well known Naruto debaters. So um, let me know, brother. I wouldn't mind that either. But that's if you want to. I'm not like too too hard of a debater. Um, I do enjoy it, but it's not like my my go to. Like I really want to do it or have something to prove. So, um, but that'll basically be it, guys. Comment your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think of this tier list. Let me know. Um, don't be too mean. Don't be too harsh to Weeaboo. Otherwise, Weeaboo's gonna come in the comments and. and you know, go crazy on all of you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, but as always, guys, subscribe for more content. Subscribe if you guys on the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.